graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death on the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for Good Friday is from Isaiah chapters 42 and 43. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marked, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of man. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant. And like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. He shall bear their iniquity. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin, the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Faith in him, 
Believe you're not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. This lesson is from Hebrews chapters 4 and 5. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Back 
and fell to the ground. And he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having his sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me?
Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Everyone who 
makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. 
He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Easter Sunday, 
that at the end of Holy Week, the culmination of everything we've been waiting for happens when we can sing our hallelujahs again, and when we can sing of Christ being risen for our sake on that Easter Sunday. But I challenge you this evening to consider that Easter is not the reason that Christ was sent in the first place. No, it's Good Friday. Because in order to fulfill all righteousness for our sake, he wasn't just born into the flesh, but he was born to die. He was born to be the fulfillment of all of the promises of the Old Testament. He was born into the flesh so that he could be a man stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, so that we would have our redemption in him. Yes, Easter is an important day for the Christian because it reaffirms what happens on Good Friday. But it's because of Good Friday we can see and know the love of God. The love of God that sends the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. The love of God that, well, his Son is sent to the cross, while the Father in heaven must turn his back on his own Son as he suffers and dies. He does so so that that Son, that Lamb of God, could suffer and die undeservedly uh, for those of us who do deserve it, so that he could carry the weight of our own iniquity. So that we can behold in him that Passover lamb. Because, friends, we're marked by the blood of that lamb. We're made holy and righteous through the blood of that lamb. It's only through death that his testament can be fulfilled. It's only through death that the sacrifice can be made. It's only through Christ's death, that we know that our redemption is secure because it doesn't rely upon our works. It doesn't rely upon our sacrifice. No, it's all fulfilled perfectly in that statement before Christ gives up his spirit. It is finished. In Greek, it's, the word is to tell us by one simple word that says everything we need to hear. Your sin is no longer counted against you. Your mourning is turned into joy, into laughter. The tears on that faithful day of his return will be wiped away from your eyes because you will see him as he's promised to be. Not as a stern judge who comes to seek your destruction, but as that willing lamb that was willing to be led to be sacrificed so that you would have life in him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't need to preach for three hours tonight in order to tell you just what God was willing to do for your sake. He was willing to give up his son so that you, his sons and daughters, would have life in him. And because of that, this is a good Friday. This is the greatest of all Fridays, because this is the day we gather to hear yet one more time what God was willing to do to save us, to overcome the gates of hell, to overthrow our sin, to make us holy and righteous in Him. Yeah, we go through some darkness on this day. Yeah, we change the way we do things. But this, friends, is the high point of this season. Because at this point, we are enveloped in the sacrifice of Him, the Lamb of God who died for us. We are surrounded with the love of God that surpasses all understanding. And we see the 
we are indeed loved. We are the beloved sons and daughters of God, his own, set aside for his own purpose, who will be ushered into his heavenly home, into that, that great banquet table, and that we would glory in him throughout all of eternity. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. <laughs> Amen. We continue now with our hymn, number 438. <laughs>
of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy, so that your church, spread throughout all the nations, may be defended against the adversary, and may serve you in true faith, and persevere in the confession of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you, for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens, that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that, rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants especially Joseph, our President, the Congress of these United States, Eric, our Governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord God Almighty that he would deliver the world from all error, take away all disease, Ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick, and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who, in any tribulation or distress, cry to you, graciously come before you so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error. Call them to faith in the true and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and gather them into his family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for all Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord, that we may serve you in true fear, to the praise and glory of your name, 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God would remember them in mercy, and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O Almighty Everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance, and may have the same love, and be of one accord and one mind, and part with us and your whole Christian Church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth, that God would send down his blessing upon them, and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them, according to his good will. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you've created, and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts we may, by your grace, be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which God, for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the
Lord. What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O oh, my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O oh Lord, have mercy.
before you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we conclude this part of our service with our hymn. 